This <laughs> conference will now be recorded. All right, okay. Joe, you're good. Good to go. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I am calling the January 4th regular virtual meeting of the Economic Development Commission to order at 6.32. My name is Joe Mira, Chair of the EDC, and I will give a brief introduction to those who have not been involved in the go to meeting format. Members of the public, if you have joined the meeting by computer, tablet, uh, smartphone, please enter your name below your camera. Also, please keep your camera inactive and keep your uh, microphone mute during the meeting unless you are speaking. Uh, since, since the system does not do well with uh, multiple speaking and the audio, uh, audio from only one person will be recognized, only one speaker will be recognized at a time. If people do not participate respectfully, I will be forced to I will be forced to hit Tim to hit the mute button so that the person who has the floor can be heard. If you are participating by computer, tablet, smartphone, and want to speak and want to ask a question to make or to make a comment, please indicate this by typing in the chat bar and you'll be recognized in order of receipt. When you are called on to speak, please unmute, unmute your microphone and activate your camera. Introduce yourself, state your name, address, and ask your question or, or make your comment. If you are participating by phone, please introduce yourself with your name, address, and ask your question or make your comment. Anyone who refuses to give your name and address or in some or if someone is not respectful to the to this commission, you will be disconnected and blocked from the meeting. I would like to begin the meeting now with the pledge. If you could all please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual with liberty and justice. I'm sorry, I just wanted to mute my phone. Okay. Uh, does anyone have a discussion or, uh, with the minutes of the meeting? Seeing none, could I have a motion to approve? I make that motion. I'm sorry? Jim? I like, <laughs> I like to make a motion to approve as uh, submitted. Second. Who second? Mark. Mark, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you. Wait a minute, Joe. Joe? Yes. I, I vote twice. I, I hear that's the thing now. You can vote twice for something. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. Election of offices. This is where you can vote for. Okay. Uh, election of offices. Someone want to make a nomination? I'd like to make a nomination that you continue to be our chair. Um, you've done a beautiful job. I'll second vice that. chair? We need a motion for a vice chair. I'd also like to make a motion that Mark be our vice chair. He's also done a great job and he stepped up to the plate when you were out. So it was real, really well. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Could we uh, have a. I'll second. I'll second Mark's nomination. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Twice. <laughs> okay. Again, it's unanimous. No sense going to it. Uh, any question on the expense report received? That Hearing none, good. we'll move on to the committee reports. Marketing, Mark, if you could. Uh, yeah, 
We've had an active committee um, this past month since we last met. We've met several times uh, in, in special session with the uh, Quinnipiac students. And um, we are progressing quite along with our campaign as we discussed the last time. Um, it's now starting to gel uh, into a, a campaign that um, we feel is gonna be very, very positive, um, principally using social media, um, we went to the mayor uh, a couple of weeks ago and sat down with him to bring him up to speed of what we were doing and how we were doing it. And we have his full support. Um, he feels that um, it's the right way for us to go. Um, at this stage of the game, um, we're going to keep him informed as we go along. So there's no, um, so there's complete transparency uh, with his administration on what, uh, what we're doing. Um, the students, today we met this morning um, for several hours. And um, uh, of course, uh, Anthony was uh, was present and uh, Patricia was present. And um, who else was there? I'm missing somebody I know. Bob Fritz. Oh, Bob and Bob Fritz. Sorry about that, Bob. Um, and uh, the students presented, uh, they've been tasked with certain um social media venues uh, platforms um each one had a different one so one person had facebook for instance another one had the the uh, web page uh that we currently have and how can we improve that another one had linkedin another one did emails and and they gave the um proposal as um why we should be with that particular uh, forum and uh, the reasoning behind it, how they would propose that we should go forward on that particular forum. And uh, they gave a, a very, very cogent reasoning behind each one. And they're going to now um, solidify that. They're going to, uh, we, we had a, a few comments that we added to it. And over the uh, the next couple of weeks, we should have a good uh, starting point where we can do a campaign. At this stage of the game, um, we're trying to decide whether we should do it in stages or we should have it as one major campaign all at once. Um, the committee is, is discussing that and we'll certainly bring that before this commission before we, uh, we decide um, to go further. Um, the, the group as I mentioned a little earlier, the, the, the group is, is exceptional. I mean, they've come up with some great, great ideas. Um, and I think that it's going to, uh, when we finally launch, it's gonna be something very exciting for the town. So uh, we're meeting every other week. Uh, we had planned to meet for an hour, then it got to be an hour and a half, then it got to be two hours, mm -hmm. uh, which tells me and should tell you that there's a lot of, great things happening when we do meet and there's a lot of discussion that's going on so what's it's being thoroughly vetted on both ends of it and uh, kudos to tim and professor tomchik out of uh, quinnipiac because they're kind of keeping us all in line and keeping us on 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 uh, the right path for this thing so um that's basically it i i certainly would welcome any comments at all from uh, Rob or Anthony or Patricia or anyone else that's been involved in it. Tim, of course, you could probably il illuminate us a little bit more on it. I think you did a fine job, Mark. I have no additional comments. Only comment, Mark, it sounds like it's an incredible program, so great job. Thank you. Lynn's got her hand up. Joe. Lynn. Yes, Lynn. Hi. I just wanted to know if any of the callers are our commissioners, as in Patricia or Rob. I'm not seeing their names or their faces. For the Call record. Number three. So do you mean I callers for the program or just callers for the program? Yeah. There are there were two callers listed. It looks like we're down to one, maybe. Um, 
I just wanted to make sure it wasn't one of our commissioners because I don't have Patricia or Rob Fritz uh, present this evening. Is that correct? I, yeah, I don't see them as well. Okay. No, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, if there's yeah. no other comments, have a comment on, I'm Mr. Sorry. Chair, I'll um, I'll end my um, uh, my report right now. Okay. Well, thank you, Mark, and uh, I thank your committee. It's a it's a great thing you guys are doing. I mean, really anxious to see it get get off the ground. I think it's going to really uh, really make a marked improvement in the town going forward for, for, for quite some time. This is not a one-time shot, so you're building a foundation that that's going to be great for the town, and I thank you all for your time. Uh, Joe, if I can just add one thing. Is that sure, please. Probably for the next meeting, certainly at the marketing committee meeting, I'll have it, um, but for the next EDC meeting, uh, we'll be pretty close to rolling this out, and I'll have a report that talks about um, the entire backdrop as to you know purpose, um, what we set out to accomplish, uh, how we're going to measure our successes or lack thereof. So um, I think next meeting, Mark, um, you know we'll go through that at, at marketing committee. But the next EDC meeting, we should have that document so that you you folks will have the you know the full breadth of what's happening and and, and all of the justifications for it. Thank you for that, Tim. Planning and zoning. Uh, sorry. Yeah, Jim. Tim and I'm and sorry, Mark. Gary. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, obviously, this is a, it's a dynamic program and a lot of good things happening. Is it possible that um, once this program's been launched, Mark and Tim, that we'll have uh, an opportunity, whether it be in retention from the tenants or planning and zoning, that we'll get some ideas from them that we could use in you know, promoting retention from incentives, at least? For our committee. Uh, you want me to answer that, Tim? Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Okay. Um, right now we're 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 having them focused on this project that we're doing, but we expect this project to continue on over many years because we think that the it's going to be set up for success. And from that, um, there's no reason why retention can't be part of this and uh, where they can come up with ideas regarding retention. Uh, they're very good on um, doing a lot of research work. What are other towns, cities doing, that type of thing. So as time goes on, from my perspective, I don't see why that can't happen. Good. The, the reason I asked that, Mark, is I've, I've been interviewed by, by a couple of times by some of the students and yep. uh, very, very on point. Uh, very, very professional. So, obviously, if we could, uh, we could gain anything on the the ongoing program, we'd like it. Thanks. Couldn't agree with you more. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, we'll move on to planning and zoning. Uh, Jim, did you want to start us off? Yeah, I, I can. And uh, we had uh, a meeting, I, I believe it was December 10th, uh, but uh, regarding the uh, new regulations for the I-5 IX zone. And um, I, I think we're, out of the, we're all in favor of proper development of that zone. And I think it's very difficult to name exactly what types of businesses are allowed in there. Um, I, I want to reflect a little bit on the downtown. We spent years under the, um, the uh, direction of um, Casey for the um, um, POCD, uh, WCI, the EDC was involved, a lot of town members were involved, and we thought we had the exact regulations to fit our downtown. We had the state come in. There was $50,000 of state money spent on design, 
We, we looked at pictures of buildings. We had the auditorium full. And it was just a, an immense amount of time that went into writing those regulations. And lo and behold, the first building sold did not fit the criteria. How did we all miss this? And, you know, as much as we would love to see certain things, this board, the, the PNC, has to keep an open mind to what's coming down the line, what industries there are, how they evolve, how they're safer now than they were 50 years ago. And I still hang my hat on the fact on the uh, regulations, um, the first paragraph of um, 4.10, uh, which is the uh, interchange district I-5, and the proposal to utilize the key locations of land with accessibility to I-91 while protecting, and that's important, while protecting the town's public water supply watershed um, with the highest standards of development. That can be done. There are a lot of major corporations out there that could put a nuclear site on that land and it would be safe, all right, if it's done right. So I, 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 I really, I'm, I'm not easy with eliminating certain classifications of, of industry. It, it's just all changed. Like I say, it's not manufacturing of 50 years ago. And, you know, I, I think we really got to keep an open mind to this because of what we saw with downtown. We had it perfect. First one was wrong. So it has to be written so that the town can protect the water supply and yet we can allow businesses to grow. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that, Tim. Thank you, Jim. Hank, did you want to comment? You were at that meeting, I think. Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, first, uh, the town council had approved the three-year extension on the real estate property tax incentive uh, and the incentive uh, housing zone. Uh, I was surprised. Uh, I was happy, but I was a bit surprised on the amount of um, conversation that that stirred uh, at the uh, at the town council meeting, and I think Tim did a great job in explaining to the uh, councilors about, uh, you know, one of the questions was, has the uh, um, has the tax incentive uh, been utilized? And you know, obviously, the you know we know that the answer to that is no. And I think uh, Tim did a, a fabulous job in educating the town council in the amount of what has to happen in order for properties to become developable developable down there and uh, this notion of assembling uh, properties together and which uh, requires uh, several landlords to come together and come to an agreement and stuff and so I think um, I think overall um, you know I'm, I'm happy that the incentive tax incentive was passed but I think more importantly uh, the town council understands a little bit more now about um, what has to happen in order to make something move, uh, particularly in that zone. So um, that happened at the town council meeting. Um, and then the uh, the brothers um, site was approved um, after some long discussion uh, there that was approved uh, for uh, to, to do the entire parking lot, not just uh, the brothers uh, area. And I think um, it's worthy to note that uh, there was discussion about uh, planning ahead and, and putting in um, some um, uh, conduits there for electric charging stations. So, uh, so the town is thinking uh, for, is forward thinking on that. Um, but I would agree with uh, Jim. I think at the last planning and zoning meeting uh, that happened in December. Uh, 
there's uh, there's been a lot of wording that's been added to the proposed um, changes to the uh, zoning, and it, it uh, quite frankly, it doesn't uh, it doesn't move the needle at all because uh, everything has an asterisk next to it and um, it talks about uh, uh, except for the watershed area, and as we know that uh, um, the I five zone is um, is almost all watershed. So um, all the work that uh, Jim has done since what is it, 2016, Jim? Uh, they've been starting to work on that. Uh, there really hasn't been any movement with this uh, particular zoning change, and it's really quite unfortunate. Uh, it seems that um, you know the uh, there there doesn't seem to be uh, a coming into mind of. Uh, this notion that Jim was talking about being able to develop responsibly, but uh, again, Tim, I thought did a, a great job in in uh, outlining, you know, the fact that there's uh, already uh, industries that are in in that zone that have successfully been able to uh, um, live together uh, harmoniously and stuff. So uh, it, the planning and zoning. Uh, um, kept that public comment uh, open till next month or this month um, but it's uh, um, it's not going to be an easy uh, uh, battle because um, there seems to be a lot of um, misunderstanding re regarding the watershed and um, and so it's unfortunate that I, I don't think that uh, it's gonna we're gonna be able to move the needle thanks Hank let's hope that that doesn't happen. First of all, just for clarification, that's a project that the EDC and Jim has been working on for well over 12 to 15 years. And there's been many workshops, uh, one as late as maybe three months ago, where there was positive movement for developing that property so the town would have another source of, of revenue to meet its expenses and to meet uh, basically uh, the funds to to keep a town moving and uh, you know the town doesn't have anything to sell it just has property to, to develop and that is a, a a nice piece of property and located in a in a very uh, prime location and again the watershed at every meeting for i'm going to say the last 15 years that i can remember has always been a uh a major concern of the EDC. We wanted a, a safe, safe uh, development uh, to go inside in the watershed area. Nobody's looking to contaminate that area. But as Jim says, even since we've started meeting some 12, 15 years ago, technology is what it is. Uh, you know, it's un, it's undetermined the number of businesses that can move into that area safe and coincide with the water district. And there needs to be a lot of, uh, a lot more consideration given to the town, uh, to the town's needs, as well as balancing the watershed's needs. I don't know if Tim, if you have anything else you want to add at this time? Or? Yeah, and Joe, just to emphasize to the group, and I want to thank the Planning and Zoning Liaison Commission Committee because you guys too have been doing yeoman's work. Um, you know, the last Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, uh, December meeting, started on a Monday night and ended on Tuesday morning. That's how long these meetings are going. That's how involved they are, how much public discussion there is, how much back and forth there is. So it's a very sensitive subject. I think we all know that. And we can all respect the fact that protecting the watershed is, in fact, very, very sensitive. And we as a commission have been saying long before I came on board, um, as Joe had mentioned, uh, that we, we can, we believe we can, and we think the science has proven that responsible development can happen within a watershed, a watershed protection district. Uh, in fact, it has happened within watershed protection districts in the town of Wallingford. And I had shared a list of businesses by category, and I won't go through the entire list now, but we do have warehouse uses in the watershed now which if what has been proposed, right now the regulation says we can do office development and hotel development in the I-5, period. 
most of the I-5 is in the watershed. So the, there's, a, there's a school of thought from our, our public water authorities that say, don't change anything. Do whatever you want anyplace else, but don't do anything in our watershed. Well, right now, in our watershed, we have warehouse uses. We have electronic assembly facilities, three of them to be exact. We have four manufacturing facilities, clean manufacturing. We have two transportation businesses. We have a, a distribution and repair facility. So we are right now responsibly functioning within the Watershed Protection District. And all we're saying as a commission is that since those businesses have come on board, the engineering advancements are, are notable. And we have even better protections now than we did when those businesses were brought on board. Case in point is Bristol Myers Squibb, when that building, you had a 1 million square foot facility that was raised, all right, scraped, knocked down, along with a power plant, all right, an, an enormous, an absolutely enormous undertaking with no impact to the watershed and water quality at all. Why? Because the Inland Wetlands Commission insisted on triple redundancies in terms of the, the protections that they wanted in that watershed protection district. We're saying, fine, as Jim pointed out earlier, put the proper precautions in place. But the, the answer is not to disallow any type of development opportunities. We think the answer is to allow us to present development opportunities so that we can effectively and let the Planning and Zoning Commission effectively make a sound decision as to whether a particular use should be allowed. I will just add that, you know, caution that manufacturing is a very, very broad category. All right, you've got traditional manufacturing, you know, I don't want to name any names, but, you know, steel manufacturing where metals are being cut and, and you know, shavings are being created and, you know, parts are being bathed in oils and so forth. And then, and, and I don't think any of us, frankly, would probably recommend that we allow something like that in the Watership Protection District. Those are great businesses and we have plenty of them, but that perhaps is not the best location. But then we've got Radial. Radial is an electronics assembly company, but their NAICS code has them as a manufacturer. It's a very broad category. So, I mean, to, to allow Radial to come in, they're up on Northrop Road. They are not in a, in a watershed right now, but to have them operate in a watershed is completely harmless. Both of those examples are manufacturing categories. There are, and I'll say, use warehouses. There are warehouse operations that, depending on what you're storing, if you're if you're warehousing, you know, dangerous chemicals of some sort, I think we would all respectfully say probably not the right place to put that warehouse use in a watershed. But warehouse, again, being such a broad category, and now evolving into e-commerce warehousing. E-commerce warehousing is, is a fantastic use almost anywhere. And yes, we can put the proper precautions in, in, in place to take and, and bring those uh, types of businesses on board. E-commerce uses from, from an EDC standpoint is much better than a traditional warehouse where you have racks and forklifts running around. E-commerce uses are typically very, very heavily heavy users of technologies, which generate a lot of tax revenue in per, terms of personal property. Um, not necessarily the jobs that uh, we would like to see per square foot that our Bristol Myers brought in, uh, but, but certainly it, it'll generate um, our electric division. We'll, we'll would love us for bringing in a, a heavy you know power user. So when we talk regulatorily about these things, we talk about you know warehousing as a category. But there, are, there within the warehousing category, there are acceptable uses, and there perhaps are some that we would not be so inclined to support. The same thing with manufacturing, all right? Within the manufacturing categories, I think we'd be inclined to support some and perhaps not so much others. So what we have been advocating for right along is to allow these uses be a special permit so that the Planning and Zoning Commission can take and weigh the positives, the pluses and minuses, for each application, as opposed to 
just disallowing the entire category. So that's that's really all I wanted to add at this point, Joe. It's it's a it's a very very active discussion. Um, internally, we continue to have discussions. Um, um, I, I continue to have dialogue with uh, our town planner, acting town planner, um, and other department heads that are involved in, in the discussion. So uh, stay tuned. I, I, I'm trying to remain um, somewhat optimistic that we, we can we can foster some changes here, um, but it is a bit of an uphill battle, and I, I get concerned that um, you know, the overriding message coming from our public utilities, and this is not a slam, I mean, their job is to protect the watershed. Our job is to protect the watershed, but they're, they're, they're somewhat messaging that almost any level of development is going to damage the watershed, which I, I just don't feel as, uh, as if that is completely accurate. I, I don't agree with that. So we're gonna continue, uh, you know, pushing that, that ball up the hill. I guess the last point that I would make on that is, especially when you keep in mind that they went ahead and uh, cut through that I-5 zone with I-91, I don't know, was that 20, 30 years ago with that technology and the watershed has survived. So I think there's there's ways of, of keeping both ends, both the uh, development and the purification of the watershed uh, mutual in, in an ongoing discussion, but we'll see. Thank you, Tim. Uh, does planning and zoning liaisons have anything else? Yeah, I, I just like to bring up one thing. The the PNC will be meeting uh, next Monday, the 11th. Now I haven't seen the schedule, but it's assumed that the uh, regulations are going to be on that schedule. I don't know if you saw the uh, schedule yet, Tim. I'm just reaching for the um, the rough draft, and they are in fact on the agenda, Jim. Okay. Uh, in these meetings, so. But this this is not an official. Uh, this this is the preliminary agenda, so anything could change between now and then. But. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, just uh, Hank and Joe, I, I won't be available on the 11th. Um, but I, I think, you know, we should uh, defend the uh, the regulations. All right, thanks, Jim. We'll be there. All right. Lynn, Lynn, you had something to say? I just wanted to say that I posted the Inland Wetlands agenda today, so it should be on our website. Okay, okay thank wetlands. you. Okay, Jim, you were referring to planning and zoning, correct, or? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that one yet, uh, but I did. I believe um, it should be out in the next couple days. Sorry. No problem. I right, thank you. Uh, retention, Gary. Sure. Um, just a just a comment. Uh, obviously, looking at what everybody else is doing, we haven't even met since the last go around, but we have a. I'm going to throw out dates of the 28th and 29th of this month, and Tim and uh, and uh, Rose and Anthony can look at see if that looks good for the next meeting. A um, couple of comments. One was um, I uh, I appreciate what was said at the incentives program, the tax incentives program, and the defense that <laughs> usually Tim always has to do. Um, the, the the email or the uh, the desk Joe's desk uh, the parking lot. Discussion on the uh, Wonka magazine, I think, is also a good focal point to kind of bring together what it takes to make this whole thing happen. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and just as a side note, um, in that magazine, uh, Rob, great job on that uh, on the arts uh, council the program with the uh, artwork. That was great. Um, <coughs> I, I I do have something I need to talk to Tim about off offline. With regard to some comments with regard to the uh, getting the group of people together uh, for a, a block, if you want to call that, Tim, for the incentive programs that I've heard. Uh, so we should discuss that offline, uh, probably at the next meeting this month. But other than that, I don't have it unless Rose or, or um, Anthony have something to add to it. But I'm much glad. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, we're going to go out of order. I'm going to ask uh, Tim if he would give his report, and I'll give my remarks afterwards. All right, Joe. Um, I'm assuming everybody has received my, my report. I sent it out uh, to you on Friday, mm -hmm. your email. I just want to make reference to the Wetlands Commission meeting that Lynn made reference to earlier, which is, in fact, this Wednesday night. And uh, Proton International, um, um, well, this is the Proton Beam Therapy Center we're all very familiar with, is, is uh, going to be presenting to Wetlands uh, at that meeting. Um, I will say that, as my report has stated, that they are uh, actually on the agendas for planning and zoning or wetlands of planning and zoning simultaneously, which is, doesn't usually happen, but um, you know they have their applications so well prepared. Um, these, these guys, and this is not me saying it, this is our town planner, our wetlands um, uh, official engineering, all saying, boy, these guys have really got their act together. Um, this, this should be pretty smooth sailing. So uh, knock on wood, um, I, I, I have a, a good feeling about it. So, uh, and that's huge. That is obviously a $72 million project. That is the single largest project that we have in our, uh, you know, in our purviews right now. Um, the, also the, on, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be on, Lynn, you saw the latest wetlands agenda it was uh, Montante Construction, the five research parkway on that agenda. You're muted. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that it was, but I can't swear. I I was working just to get it on, not really reading it. <laughs> okay. So, sorry. I'll, I'll double check that, but um, um, that is for the 219,000 square foot uh, Amazon warehouse that is being proposed for the site. Um, so that is an active conversation for wetlands. So we'll just keep track of what's going on there. Um, I just wanted to mention that, Joe, are you going to mention the meeting that we had with uh, Senator Chickarell in your report? So I'll pass on it in my. No, you can go ahead. Okay. All right. So uh, Senator-elect um, um, Paul Chickarella and Joe and Mark and I got together and met. We just wanted to, uh, this is the senator that um, has taken the, the uh, seat that was previously uh, occupied by Len Fasano for so long. And we just wanted uh, Senator-elect Chickarella to uh, know who we were and put, make sure Wallingford was on the map in his mind, the old top of mind awareness you know, concept. Um, very nice fella, um, very engaged. He's, he's a business owner himself, um, on several businesses actually. So I, I think we've got someone who at least understands the, uh, you know, the plight of business and um, you know, some of the, the challenges that they have in the state of Connecticut. So, we just wanted the committee to know, or the commission to know, that um, uh, we did meet with the senator and made introductions, and uh, we exchanged cell phone numbers. So, um, you know, it's I think good that we have uh, the ability to make that call when need be. Um, I want to talk for a minute, just a second, about the railroad uh, noise. So um, uh, we just heard today, and I know this is my December report, so this was not something that we knew in December. But uh, we did hear back from the uh, railroad uh, after uh, meeting with them, you know, virtually. It was the mayor, uh, Janice Smalls, uh, our, our town engineer, um, Janice Small Corporation Council, our town engineer, um, and several members of the railroad uh, commission, led by John Burdick, who happens to be a Wallingford resident, a uh, very nice gentleman. And, and we appreciated them taking the time to meet with us. But we talked about what we felt were the excessive, you know, noises coming from the trains. They did in fact do a study on the noise, the decibel level, and those train horns were above acceptable decibel levels. So we look at that and say, hey, we made some progress. So they're in the process of making the changes to those horns now. And then they're testing some other things uh, that we had requested. Uh, mainly they, we have a wayside horn over by CVS at that crossing. Uh, which is a, a stationary horn that's, that uh, is in the, in the ground. And as the train approaches that horn on the tracks, the conductor of the, engine, uh, of the train gets a signal that says, don't blow your horn because there's a wayside horn coming up in front of you. So they don't blow the train horn. Uh, and we're in the process of make, trying to determine whether more of those wayside horns would reduce the decibel level of oncoming trains while, of course, protecting the public safety. 
Um, we've also asked them to consider um, using uh, Quinnipiac Street and Hall Avenue because those two at-grade crossings are so close to each other, to consider those as one crossing as opposed to two crossings. Because as we know, as, as uh, Jim Wolf did uh, a lot of the research on the, the protocols for the trains, and thank you again for that, Jim, that the, the sequence of, of horns that need to blow is five altogether every time you, you cross an at-grade crossing. They've, they haven't blown five horns and they're already crossing the crossing for the next five. So it just becomes this you know, excessive stream of horn blowing when the train is already crossing at the gates. It just, but the engineers were instructed what to do and that's what they do. So um, anyway, I just want to give you an update. I think there's some good news on the decibel level and continued good news that um, the railroad is taking seriously our observations. Uh, and that fact that you know, we believe as a commission that the, uh, the um, as some have called it, the obscene level of noise coming from those trains, given frequency and decibel level, uh, we, we feel are, are an inhibitor to uh, potential development around that railroad station. So that is uh, the update on the trains. Um, very pleased to say that there's good uh, progress here. You've seen in the paper um, more public discussion about the reutilization of the, the old historic train station. Um, so that now is a very public subject. And um, we've had some internal meetings on that. And, you know, stay tuned. We, we continue to uh, take and, and uh, I think, make progress. Um, so I'll leave it at that. By next meeting, I think I'll have a more detailed report. But, you know, the mayor is very supportive of researching the feasibility of doing something different at the railroad station. Uh, I see Kathy Lilly on. Uh, Kathy, I know, is very supportive and has been very engaged in, in uh, you know, trying to take and do something uh, again with the, with the old railroad station. So we think that um, that could be something that would really stimulate activity and some energy and enthusiasm in the lower part of the hill. And I, I've referred to it internally as our lead by example project. So, you know, we want other developers to do things, yet we have a perfect asset sitting there that uh, you know, we, we could do a lot more with, with all due respect to adult education. Um, we, we hope that there's another place where we can, uh, they can, you know, deliver their, uh, their value. So uh, stay tuned on that. And um, lastly, I will just say that um, uh, Lynn's position, the posting has closed. It closed on December 28th. There have been upwards of a dozen applications that have uh, come in. Uh, they're coming into HR. HR will, is doing some screening. Uh, will, they will do a certain level of testing uh, based on skill sets that have been previously uh, identified in the job description. And then at some point, uh, a group of applications will go to the mayor uh, and myself and the mayor and I will they can review those and, and you know start interviewing. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. And that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Tim. Just to piggyback on basically a few of the things Tim said, first and most important is, Lynn, we're going to miss you. This is Lynn's last meeting. It's been a pleasure working with you. Let me tell you, you're a true professional, and I appreciate everything you've done for the commission and uh, over and above sometimes, and you're going to be missed. So we thank you, and uh, I'll see you before you go. Thank you, everyone. Okay, just a little uh, update on uh, from the desk of Joe, I guess is where I want to start. Uh, the articles have been well received uh, as far as uh, feedback. Believe it or not, I'm getting a lot of feedback, most of it positive and some of it, some of it interesting, but in any respect, People are reading it, uh, which is what the marketing committee uh, wanted. We wanted to put it out there. And my thought is for the next issue, and just something for us to kick around, is maybe the next issue, rather than have it issue-oriented, maybe have it commission-oriented. Who we are, what we do, what our mission is, uh, really elaborate that. As we're looking to grow business, uh, it's for multiple uh, reasons. 
One of them is the economy of the community. Again, as I said earlier, without growth, the town's funds are stagnant. Stagnant funds means, you know, salaries that are uh, pay raises that cannot be accomplished, uh, you know, potholes. I mean, you just go down the laundry list. So, again, we all know what it takes to run a home. We all know, a lot of us knows what it takes to run a business. You can just imagine what it takes to run a community. And we need to keep our eye focused on growth, quality growth. Again, keeping everything in balance. Uh, so anyway, that's something I'm thinking maybe for our next article that we would want to look at. Uh, as far as the economy, uh, you know, it's no secret that we have people going out of business uh, and it's a real tragedy and no fault of their own. Uh, I'm looking at Hubcap to work with the, uh, put together a round table type of panel to work on some solutions or some suggestions or just email me if you have any on how we could put something together for the people that have lost the business. These are the people that have locked their doors and are 45, 55, 65 years of age and saying, what do I do now? And there's a lot of resources out there and there's got to be a way to communicate. And I guess my two issues is how do we contact them? And that would be something I wish somebody could uh, get back to me on if you have any suggestions. And basically, what we could do to help uh, guide them in their careers. I mean, Hubcap's pipeline programs, we could do something in that format for them, work with Workforce Alliance. There's a lot of resources, but I don't think most of these people really know because for the last 20, 30 years, they've been fighting to keep their families and their business above water and through no fault of their own, uh, somebody's come and put the padlock on uh, their, their livelihood. So any input, anyone who would like to talk to me about this, be happy to talk to you. Lastly, I would have to say Hubcap is is doing well with the, uh, the pipelines. We can use additional sponsors. We're putting people to work. Uh, up until the pandemic, 75% of the participants uh, found uh, jobs. Uh, um, most of them, um, I would almost say, close to double their salaries and received unbelievable benefits in, in their from their past. And the last category, the last uh, program we had, we had two high school seniors that participated, and both of them got jobs through the program. So the programs work. We just need to make sure that they're funded, that they're here for the next next year. And Hubcap is meaning soon to uh, talk about this year's reopening and getting things back on track. So there again, any input you can give me, uh, basically in a form of sponsorships, that would be great. But uh, just want to get the word out there. Uh, that being said, uh, again, Lynn, I want to thank you. I want to thank you all for your work this, this last year. I think we've done a great job. Uh, the town has really succeeded uh, in many respects for the work you guys have done, uh, ladies. Uh, if anyone has anything in other business, I'll be glad to talk to listen. Seeing none. Hi, Joe, I just I just want to echo your comments about Lynn, and I have the benefit of, of working with her and, and telling her how special I feel and how, how strongly I feel about the, uh, the quality of her work product. But I do want to say it publicly. Um, she keeps this place going, and boy, are we going to miss her. And so, Lynn, it's been 30 how many 30 plus years, right? 30 some odd. Uh, that's a lot of EDC meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she uh, she keeps me on the straight and narrow. She works diligently to try to make sure I do that. <laughs> so, and I thank her for that as well. Okay. All right. Welcome. Thank you, Tim. All right, Lynn, we'll be talking to you. All right. If thank no you, one else has. For all your kind words. <laughs> Okay, could we have a motion to close the meeting? I make a motion we close the meeting. <laughs> okay. And from the background comes, Rosemary, yes.
Oh, who, who seconded? I'm sorry. Uh, I Mark. seconded. Mark seconded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Twice. Unanimous. Thank you. Happy New Year. And we'll mm -hmm. talk soon. Take care. Bye, Lynn. Bye. Bye, Lynn. Bye, everyone. Talk to you later. Be on the street. Thank you. Take Bye. care, everyone. <laughs>